Jonathan Williams was the man who wrote the book that exposed what it is all about. The so-called War of Independence, 1776. General Cornwallis, the English general, went to George Washington and told him, well, now that you've won the war, which was all set up, and it was, uh, it was a set up from the beginning, Cornwallis told Washington that America in 200 years would seem to be the bastion of freedom. However, it would be preaching the it would be preaching Judaism from its pulpit. Judaism is of the devil. One of the biggest lies of all time is that Jesus is a Jew. Well, no, he wasn't. And he isn't. He's an Essene. There is a huge difference. As we go through the slides, you'll see that uh, the Jews at the time have already died out. And so what has happened is that the Khazar Jews, from 800 AD, as a matter of commerce and profiting from trade, adopted Judaism, which is an abomination. Jesus condemned it. It's the basis for the Talmud, which is the abomination that makes desolate today. It's all part of the Daniel prophecy. And as Jesus, he condemned it. The first five books of the Torah, or called the Torah, the God speaking is Lucifer, freely admitted by Jews today who think that they have won Jew world domination. They chosen themselves and written into the script the uh, influence of Moses over their pathetic religion that's always been an abomination. It will be wiped from the face of the earth and so will anybody who does not bow to the Lord Jesus Christ in the coming months. The product of Judaism and its control and influence over all of the world, especially the Christian nations, is the Holy Bible, called that by Lucifer, recognized as the great light in masonry, or Luciferian worship, containing the Old and New Testaments. Now these, of course, are the Bibles that all the Western nations are preaching from the pulpits. There's nothing holy about the Bible as it is. The words certainly have been altered, manipulated, omitted or added in. So what you have is a great deal of lies, half-truths and a very little truth. However, the Christian world has fallen for it, sending their support to Israel the abomination that makes desolate, the USA being its war machine with Britain behind everything. The seat of the power, if you like. And at the top of the heap, you've got Rothschild, identified by the rebirth place of the Christ. 105 Rothschild Avenue, his rebirth home, Sydney, Australia, on January 11th, 1944. So because everybody's expecting... Jesus to front up as a floaty ghost riding a 500 foot high horse. They have been thoroughly deceived and deluded. They would rather defend this abomination of words, ink on paper, that has become a snare and a trap for them. Revelation 12:12. 12, 12. The devil has been cast down to the earth and does deceive the whole world. How? Through the Jews who call themselves Jews that are not, they are the Pharisees who reincarnate, as we all do, only they at the time do not believe it or say that they don't. And so they live for today to get what they can. That's why everybody is subject to the demands of, of Israel, like a, a rabid dog that it is, with its rulers, Netanyahu and all those bowing down to it. It was interesting that... Um, Francis entertained the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. Now, Justin Welby has the information, the apostolic letter written by Pope Benedict. He is still the Pope. The Christ did not accept his retirement. You can't retire or resign from being a Pope until death. So Francis is the elected uh, idiot 
by the even more stupid cardinals who know nothing about prophecy but are fulfilling their own evil lusts. It's all about money, money, money makes the world go round and what they can get and hiding their own sins. They are all accountable for their own sins. Not one man takes it, certainly not Benedict, and that's been held up in a court in uh, New York. The uh, spurious charges against him by Kevin Annette, who himself is Antichrist. He talks in the name of Jesus, hasn't a clue. He's been, he knows that the Lord Jesus Christ is back and is all part of the Zionist plan to deceive the entire world. Just keep you distracted with that. Earth. Well, what is really going on is the heavens are changing. God himself has been on the earth all this time and the entire world of uh, deluded Christianity rejects him. So it's time for some shake-up. What you have here is the uh, common image of the Shroud of Turin. No one's been able to work out what's going on, and I've uh, made um, several videos, uh, PowerPoints, etc. Of course, I've uh, sent the information to the various uh, people who are renowned for being experts on the Shroud and not heard one word back. What you have here is actually um, the outside of the Shroud. And uh, I'll go down to the uh, next one and uh, I'll show you what the Pope saw and um, why it was so impressive to him showing my face superimposed on the shroud itself. When the Pope uh, saw this, uh, being an expert on the Shroud, um, he was convinced after studying it for three days that uh, the bone structure and uh, 
what he saw in the photograph was to him so astounding that um, he was thoroughly convinced. I'd like to say on the left hand side that is the reverse image. Uh, it should be the other way around and I'll show you why in, uh, in the next few slides. Now what we're looking at here is uh, what scientists who have studied the shroud think is how the shroud, when placed against my body and a resurrection occurred, left the spear on the right side. We all know that the heart is on the left side. So what was actually happening? My soul in the blood as Yahweh within the body of Jesus the man on the cross, myself called the Son of God. What happened was the soul left the body and the blood when all the blood drained out of my body can no longer sustain life because life is in and the soul is in the blood. When the resurrection occurred, this was in the tomb. The tomb of Joseph of Arathamea. Now the soul came back into the body through the shroud. Therefore the light, the burnt image, is on the outside of the cloth, not the inside against my body. So in this slide you're looking at the outside of the shroud which was not against my body. We see that the right hand is holding the left. We see that the right foot is on top of the left foot. We see that the blood from the spear is on the left side. This is because the soul left on the cross and came back as light, God is light, into my body to resurrect it, passing through the outside of the cloth and then passing through the cloth into my body for resurrection. So we see the line pointing to the wound from the spear on the right side. My heart is on the left, not the right side. Blood from the nail, left wrist, left hand holding my right wrist, wrong way around. The left knee slightly bent, left foot upon the right, blood from the nail. So here we're looking at the outside of the cloth draped over my body. The soul re-entered my body backwards, reverse, as if it had left forward. As it passed through the cloth, the wound into my heart is on my left side, where the heart is. Then we've got dried blood from the cross. Now the reason why there's dried blood there 
it was approaching the Sabbath and the women, which was uh, my uh, mother, Mary, my wife, Martha, and uh, my mother's aunt, Mary, were cleaning the body. The time had run out. You see that the uh, right knee is bent, the calf muscle bone turned outwards. There's a slight line there between that white line running across showing the different heights of the knee as one leg is bent. If you look at the actual uh, comparison to the back, you find that the front of the shroud is longer than the rear of the shroud. And that is because the rear of the shroud was laid flat on the slab while the front of the shroud was laid over the contours of the body, knees bent, etc. So when you stretch it out side by side, the uh, front part is longer than the left. The right heel turned out, the foot placed on top of the left, blood from the nail through both feet. Now this is the back of the shroud. Uh, you see that there's no pressure points anywhere, as you would expect. This is one of the puzzles of uh, the puzzle scientists who have studied this for the last 20 odd years. Since 1978, when it was viewed by specialists from around the world. So I say, my back shows more wounds than the front. Uh, an SCN pigtail down to the back but there is no sign of flat areas expected from the body laying flat on a stone on top of the cloth. So I ask why. My soul had left from the cross to return through the cloth and as the cloth was flat the burn passed through it or the soul passed through it leaving a burn back into the body that did have pressure points but the photograph of the light passing through is not a photograph of the body at all. It's a photograph of the soul. So only dried blood remained on my body. The three ladies washed my body was my wife Martha, my mother Mary and grandmother's sister Mary. So we've got the points up top there, the crown of thorns, the Essene pigtail, massive wounds, no flat areas, dried blood from the spear, left side, ran down to the left side. You can see it there, if you just look very closely, halfway up and to the left. That's the left side. No flat area on my buttocks. The right knee bent. Calf wider, due to foot arched on left. Now what we have here is the uh, pressure points uh, out past the second arrow, between the second and third arrow on the, on the lower. There's no pressure point because that's a slab and the sole is coming up through. Forget about the slab, it doesn't mean nothing. It's coming up through the material and leaving the uh, image on the outside as the sole passes through into the body. The body is dead. On the top, the sole is uh, coming through from the top because it's coming from all directions, front and back. And therefore, you'll see that the uh, length of the top section is longer when you compare the actual shroud measurements, front and back. The front is longer than the back, meaning that it passes through the sole and leaving the image on the outside of the cloth, not the inside as everyone has been speculating. In this uh, slide, I'm showing you the age difference between uh, myself and my brother at the top, which is 8.88 years. Below that is uh, my daughter, who was born in Port Alberni, Canada, when I was 8,880 days old, and the sunlight for that particular town was 888 minutes. And she was conceived um, 280 days later, uh, rather before, and uh, that date was the uh, 27th of uh, July, 
and 1967 of Jupiter, which is 88,800 miles across, um, was above Port Alberni for uh, eight, eight, eight minutes. Below that is the age I was when I married my wife, the harlot from Lithgow. Hosea prophecy had to be done to find the most evil, despicable person there was to marry. I was 1162 weeks and uh, 4 of 7 days, so that's 1162.6 weeks. That's the width of the antechamber of the Great Pyramid. Then we go to my third wife, which is uh, Mary Magdalene, reincarnated. Um, she is um, similar to uh, my other wives, all uh, of their own uh, inclination to evil. This lady is a gambler and a liar. And, uh, uh, her uh, daughter is 1162.6 days younger than Tracy. That's the one to the left second down. And uh, she is um, 11.626 days younger than me, so she got 11.626 years between the two daughters. Uh, and that's shown in the next slide below. So Michelle's mother, a Brianan, born December the 20th, 1979, Geelong, Australia, sunlight 888 minutes and is 11.626 years. Younger than Tracy Lee, born in Port Alberti, Canada, when sunlight was 888 minutes, and I was 8880 days old. I married Tracy Lee's mother, Eileen, on April 23rd, 1966. I was 1162.6 weeks of age. Antichamber, of course, is 116.26 pyramids wide, and it's on the passage leading into the King's Chamber, so I had to come out of the king's chamber by bursting the coffer and uh, go out through the genetic key uh, to walk down through the earth, etc. So um, anyone who's been studying this and it's important to you, you should look it up and, and talk to people that uh, already know about it who uh, are uploading this video and um, they'll put you on the right track. There's, there's so much to it that I can't cover it all in this one video. Now, uh, I minted the uh, dollar coin on the left out of brass and uh, I was charged with counterfeiting. Uh, that's when it was back in uh, 1987. King William minted the first coins in Scotland. He too was illegal according to England. So uh, if they could have, they would have charged him with uh, doing that as well. But this is what kings do. Submit to no one. This is the only surviving line of uh, King William. Uh, he married after his wife died, Emma Guide. She was the mother of Magalta and Margaret, both married into the Marshall family. And um, after Magalta died, he married Isabel de Avenal. She was the most royal line from uh, Europe. Sorry, Emma Guard died. And then uh, the king remarried Isabel de Avenal. And uh, his um, first son, Robert de London, died as a baby, leaving uh, Henry Golightly. And that descends down to my mother. And of course his daughter's marrying Marshall descends down to the Marshall side of the family. But I should say that um, my grandfather, Francis Aloysius Golightly, he uh, married uh, a lady that was uh, my grandmother, of course, and she's a Mary, descended from the Habsburgs. So uh, she's the Queen of uh, Europe. Now, um, you can still find this if you look up Burke's Peerage, but it is difficult. And uh, thanks to uh, 
my people have been able to um, put all this information and find it in Europe and uh, present it to the Pope. And uh, I give them a lot of praise for doing so. It's difficult to uh, get to the bottom of it all. So they've tried to wipe uh, all my lineage out, which is, of course, a testimony. Why would they do that? Well, obviously, uh, I must be a threat. Of course I am. 